Hello everyone, my name is Haralan Surakakis and I come from Boston University and I would like to talk today about graph clustering with a 40 Oracle. This is joint work with Casper uh, Green Larsen from Aarhus University and Michael Mitzenmacher from Harvard University. So uh, as you all know, graphs are ubiquitous. They model a wide variety of real world data sets, including computer networks, the internet, social networks, online social networks, our brains, airline networks, and also images. So we have all these graphs, we want to analyze them, and among the problems that stand out for their importance is clustering, which is a major problem in graph mining and more broadly in data mining as well, with a very long history of uh, uh, research and also with a large volume of uh, work behind them. Despite this fact, clustering is a very active uh, research area. And part of the reason why this is true is because new variants of clustering problems keep emerging. For instance, in 2017, Flavio Cherichetti and others, motivated by US Supreme Court orders, uh, they introduced a notion of fair clustering. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about clustering with a faulty oracle, and I would like to start by motivating the problem. So one of the applications of interest is entity resolution using crowdsourcing. So entity resolution is a classical database problem. And uh, the goal in entity resolution is to identify all records in a database that refer to the same underlying entity. So uh, advances in uh, technologies, crowdsourcing technologies like Amazon Mechanical Turk have enabled new approaches to entity resolution. So for instance, uh, we can hire workers, we call these humans in the loop, we can hire a worker and we can present them two entities from our database and we can ask them, do these two refer to the same entity or not? Inevitably, these answers tend to be noisy. And also one other aspect is that among all these possible queries that we can perform, we would like to minimize their number because for every query, we have to pay some amount. So for instance, uh, what do I mean inevitably noisy? These are, uh, suppose your database is uh, images consists of images and uh, this is like a small part. So on the left side, you see Natalie Portman. On the right side, you see Kira Knightley. And because let's say of uh, the different haircut from here to here, a worker may tell you that yes, with probability 0.8, uh, we get the right answer that A and B refer to the same person. But with probability 0.2, we may get the wrong answer that they're different people. or between A and C, A and D, let's say, even if they're different people, we may get the wrong answer with some probability again. So we will model this mathematically, but I would like to start to continue by saying that the setting where we don't have the graph, so we have the entities, and we need to perform, let's say, queries to figure out the edges of the graph, if they exist or not, if they're positive or negative, and so on, uh, is a very common setting, and in general, uh, there exist uh, uh, cases where performing these tests is very expensive. For instance, here you can see a protein-protein interaction network between HIV proteins and human proteins. And the bottom line is that any one of those edges here involves a, a highly trained person or more, a team, uh, equipment, facilities, and also they tend to be noisy. So perhaps we would like to be able to predict if uh, an edge exists or not, or let's say if uh, an interaction is positive or not, by being resilient to noise, robust to noise, and also performing as few queries as possible to minimize the cost. So in this paper, we uh, study a very clean mathematical model uh, with lots of relevant work that you can see in the paper. Um, here I will focus mostly on the model and the most related work that we improve. So we have n items and we have a function sigma, which is the latent clustering function that we don't know. So we have two clusters for convenience. We have the red and the blue cluster. So let's say the nodes that map to minus one are the red and the other ones the blue. And we define this quantity tau uv over here, which is the product of sigma u times sigma v. So it's between plus one and minus one. It's plus one for pairs of nodes inside the same cluster and minus one across the cluster. So the model, the probabilistic model is that we can query any pair of nodes exactly once. So without 
like we assume that if you query it multiple times, you get the same answer. Plus, there are reasons in crowdsourcing that show that uh, repeated querying may even hurt you. This is a paper by Verius and Molina. So anyway, we can query any pair of nodes that we choose uh, exactly once to get a noisy measurement that we call tau tilde uv. And this is the true sign of the interaction, sigma u times sigma v, which is exactly tau uv, times this eta uv random variable, which models the noise. So if it's plus one, then we get the correct answer about whether u and v belong to the same cluster. But if it's minus one, we get the wrong answer. The reality is flipped. And we assume that the expected value of eta uv is delta. So equivalently, you can see this model as choosing a pair of nodes, uv, you query them, and you get the correct answer if they belong to the same cluster with probability one half plus q over two. And with uh, probability one half minus q over two, we get the wrong answer. And you can see the expect this equivalent because expected value of eta uv is exactly this. Sorry for the typo. This is delta. One half minus delta over two times minus one plus one half plus delta over two times plus one, which is exactly delta. So the goal is to recover sigma with as few queries as possible and uh, also have an algorithm which is efficient. That means the runtime ideally should be polynomial or even better linear in the number of queries. So what we show in this paper is an algorithm called Pythia to truth. Pythia was an oracle in ancient Greece giving ambiguous answers, which runs in n log n over delta square time plus log cubed n over delta to the eight. So unless delta is extremely tiny, this is the dominating term. And the query complexity is n log n over delta square plus log square n divided by delta to the sixth. So let me clear this up. So specifically, as I said, except for tiny delta, this is like optimal uh, query complexity for no Um, I will continue the presentation. I apologize for this. I don't know what happened. So, uh, Mazumdar and Saha treat the general case of K-clusters, and they have two results. On the one hand, they provide very optimal, let's say, query complexity for non-adaptive algorithms, but the runtime is impractical. And on the other side, they provide efficient polynomial time algorithm with suboptimal query complexity. So for K equals two, they perform n log n over delta to the fourth queries. So our algorithm is very simple and easy to implement, easy to describe and easy to implement. So we choose two sets, A and B, arbitrarily. A has log n over delta square nodes and beta uh, log n over delta to the fourth nodes. Um, we perform all possible queries between them. And now we use those queries to figure out the, the signs of the interactions uh, inside this set A, we will figure out every sign inside here correctly with high enough probability. How do we do this? Let's fix two nodes, A and A prime, and let's consider one node from the B side. So B belongs in B. B will cast a vote with respect to this uh, interaction. So if A and B will have a plus, and here we have a minus, the vote of B would be the product of this. So it would be minus one. If we had plus and plus, the guess would be plus one. And if we had minus and minus, the guess again would be plus one. So essentially, we take the product of the answers of the oracle along these two paths. And this is the vote of B for this specific interaction. It turns out that 
if we take all votes from all Bs in this side, so we have a bunch of plus ones, let me write it over here. So if we have, let's say, a bunch of plus ones, minus ones, each one from every B on the B side, so this is for every B on the B side, if we take the majority of these as a prediction of this interaction, this is correct with high enough probability for all pairs. So once we do this, what we have done, essentially think of this set A. Well, inside A, we will have nodes from the red cluster and from the blue cluster, let's say, uh, without loss of generality. I mean, we could have only from one, but if we have from two, all the edges inside here should be plus, all the edges inside should be plus, and all the edges across should be minus. So if we remove the negative edges, we can find two connected components, like two clicks, and the largest one of them, since A has log n over delta square nodes, will also be log n over delta square. So we take this set and we call it S, and finally what we do, we take every node U, which is not in S, we perform all queries between U and S, and if the majority is plus one, we decide that U belongs to the same cluster like S. We don't add it there, we just keep S fixed, but we decide that U and the nodes inside here that belong to the same cluster. If the majority is minus, we take it from the other side and we say U does not belong to the same cluster node, like nodes in S. And uh, this step, of course, will give n log n over delta square queries, since we have order n nodes here and we perform log n over delta square queries for each one of them. So this is how we get this query complexity. You can convince yourselves for the runtimes. Um, it's pretty easy to implement and straightforward to do it efficiently. Here you can see the pseudocode. We haven't tried to optimize the constants, but uh, they're not too bad. And I would like to conclude by saying that we have designed an efficient state-of-the-art algorithm for two clusters that combines time and query efficiency. An interesting problem is to remove those low order terms that we have and get this query complexity at runtime for uh, all delta, all valid delta. Um, we want to extend results to uh, uh, more than k clusters. There is an inherent issue with our approach. We use the fact that the friend of the friend is my friend and the enemy of my friend is my enemy. So for instance, if you have, let's say three clusters and you have a minus here and a minus here, let's say between these nodes using, uh, this is the same node, uh, then by taking products of two paths, you would infer that this node U and this V belong to the same cluster, but this is not the case. We haven't thought too much about it, but it's like an interesting problem. What we've been thinking more about is like, realistically, the noise is not IID. How can we uh, get better models that deal with this case and also perform graph mining with as few queries as possible? So there is an extended version of our work where we study more applications. Here in that paper, we have the theory, Pythia to Truth, but we have a suboptimal algorithm and applications on uh, predicting signed interactions on social media, which is joint work again with Michael and Casper, uh, and also Yarek, Pritum, and Vasilis from Harvard, and Ben from BU. And I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope everybody is safe and well. I didn't want to run into unexpected technical issues, so I prefer to just upload the video. If you have any questions, feel, uh, do not even hesitate to email me. I'll be more than glad to answer your questions and uh, uh, stay healthy. And hopefully the situation is over soon. Take care. Bye-bye.